Would you though? Only in the public eye. Privately. I mean, what do you, what do you got to wear? You got to wear like a mask, like Phantom of the Opera, when you go out. <laughs> <laughs> I have a burned face. Don't look at me. Uh, I. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that. <laughs> How about you? Would you drop I have it off? No idea. Boom. Here you go. Here's your first down payment of six hundred thousand dollars. You get the other four hundred thousand a year from now, and your family's gonna be just fine, Mr. Meadows. Well, I'll t- if I was single, I'd jump on it. Uh, yeah. For a million dollars a year, with yeah, people might try to kill you. Okay. Well, whatever. I mean, until they do, I'm making a million bucks a year, bruh. And then you're like, oh, that was too damn close. I'm done. I don't need any of that. Yeah, and then I, I mean, I might still have some money. I probably wouldn't, because I'll tell you right now, I'd probably blow the hell out of that money. <laughs> I got another story for you where it's not exactly a similar situation, but the guy would have been pretty well off, but he, he kind of botched the job. Oh. Uh, the There was a general in the Allied Forces, General Bernard Montgomery, and he was... It was the whole D-Day thing, everything leading up to that. They were trying to scheme and scheme about – they were trying to fool the German forces as to where things were going to happen, where and when things were going to happen. And they found this Australian actor, M.E. Clifton James. He uh, – so they, they may – I mean the dude looks a lot like the general. But what happened was – well, I'll read down some of this for you. Soldier M.E. Clifton James successfully impersonated General Bernard Montgomery for intelligence purposes during World War II. In 1940, James acted in an Army production called When Knights Were Bold, and his photograph appeared in an Army newspaper with a remark about how much he resembled General Montgomery. As a result, he was approached by actor David Niven in May of 44. Niven, then a colonel in the Army, uh, kinematograph? I don't know what that is. Kinna... Like cinematography, K I N E M A T O G R A P H. Kinematograph. <laughs> I'm gonna... Let's go with it. Photograph. Can you say it again? <laughs> I don't want to say it again. <laughs> Modograph. Modigra- Kinematograph. Army kinematograph section. He told James he was he was wanted to impersonate Monty, uh, Bernard Montgomery as this would allow Montgomery to be somewhere else, thus confusing the Germans. James had to learn Montgomery's gestures, mannerisms, gait, and voice, and had to give up smoking. And that was a problem. Because M.E. Clifton James, well, not, this isn't the problem. M.E. Clifton James was an Australian. So he had to lose his accent and all that. But But hey, mate. Exactly. (laughs) That kind of thing. He had to give that up. No more shit. your baby. (laughs) No more shrimps on Bobby's. <laughs> Foster's American for beer. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the Australian I know. Kangaroo. <laughs> Crikey. Knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's no knife. Well, we lost that 11% of Australian listeners. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> they might like it. They might say, damn, these Americans. Crikey, these Americans. <laughs> Because James had lost his right hand middle finger in the First World War, because he's a badass like that, Mm -hmm. a realistic replacement was made. Even his wife had to be deceived and was both kept in the dark and sent back to Leicester. Once he was trained, his trip as Monty was to Gibraltar and from there to Algiers. Monty's, quote unquote, presence succeeded in confusing the Germans in regard to the invasion plans. James was later the subject of a biopic called I Was Monty's Double, starring James himself in the double role as Monty and himself. The second and less famous Monty's Double, Keith Deemer Banwell, was serving with the land-based long-range desert group. Banwell was captured in a raid on Tobruk, but with a friend managed to steal a German vehicle and escape. During a subsequent raid on Crete, he was taken prisoner at uh, Heraklion and put under the personal supervision of former world heavyweight boxing champion max schmeling he was serving in the german army banwell and a few other a few of his comrades managed to slip away from the captors and then acquired an assault landing craft with the help of some cretan fishermen they made their getaway but the craft